Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Want to access geo-restricted games? Go to expressvpn.com slash inside. I'm gonna do it like a cyber kind of way, right? What does right? that mean? Hey everybody, and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Monday. Let's oh. clap, let's clap for Cyberpunk 2077. I am clapping with robot hands. Connor, if you could just <laughs> add in some like robot creaking kind of noise. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 is now officially just three days away. Ooh, only three sleeps! I do not require sleep. I am staying awake. It is hell. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. So yeah, it is still really happening. Developer CD Projekt Red tweeted this morning that the game is up for preloading on their good old game store starting right now. But here's yeah. an even better sign that the game's actually releasing 100% for real Thursday, reviews are here. The embargo actually just lifted before we started recording today. I had to completely rewrite the daily on the fly. So if it's bad, it's not the edit. Right, yep. it's the writer. But so far the game, a very healthy 91 on Metacritic. I feel like that's very good, but not all time great scores. So maybe a little review controversy already. And RIP to anyone who gave it less than like a 97 because yes. they are getting death threats <laughs> right now. We're curious as to what CD Projekt Red thinks of these scores because they've told investors that they're definitely paying attention. Back in October in a recent earnings call with analysts, CD Projekt Red's Vice President of Business Development, Michael Nowakowski, he was asked about their expectations for Cyberpunk, and he gave some pretty candid answers. He said that when it comes to Metacritic, we continuously aim at a 90 plus game, so nothing has changed here. This remains the goal. You know they wanted like secretly like over a 95. All right, let's get to what the critics thought. And we should note reviews still trickling in. And we haven't seen many reviews from the big outlets yet. There was a bit of controversy over the last week with lots of outlets saying they didn't get codes at all, but we'll get to that in a second. So first, the reviews critics called Cyberpunk a triumph of open world gaming, where your character V explores the futuristic Night City, a megalopolis that's dominated by giant corporations and a population that is obsessed with body modifications. What is this, Beverly Hills? Oh. Nice. Windows Central gave Cyberpunk a glowing write-up, calling it a celebration of the entire medium, marrying cutting-edge technical innovation, unrestrained user agency in an authentic and immersive experience that transports you to another universe. That's all we want. The thesaurus putting in work. Yeah. For real. They added that despite an impressive array of bugs and glitches, the game is an <laughs> industry high point that simply put, may never be bested. Well, maybe someone will make one without bugs and glitches. <laughs> it's possible. Where's that CD Projekt Red polish? Huh? Mm. Come on. Maybe we should delay it again. You know, just yeah, come on. not a bad idea. Just try it again and maybe they'll get a 92 next time. Another thing that critics pointed out is that the game's campaign might not be as long as you think. Games Radar called the core campaign, quote, surprisingly short if you just focus on the main quests, which I do because I have children. They said they were genuinely taken aback at facing a point of no return warning in the core campaign campaign that felt like it arrived just after the story was really hitting its stride. Oh. They added that if you ignore side jobs, gigs, and other Night City lures, you could be looking at a completion time of somewhere in the 15 to 20 hours region. That's super short. That's super short. Still though, they gave the game a perfect score, calling it a paragon of open world gaming, offering the kind of freedom to explore and define your character that provides a new pinnacle for the genre. So it's weird. It's like, yeah, there are all these major bugs and problems, but that 10 out of 10. Oh, tons of bugs. Uh, it's way too short. 10 out of 10. No, that makes it a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10. What right, the f right. are you talking about? Video Games Chronicle, though, called it a 50 plus hour package, though. So maybe the other reviewer is speedrunning it. Fing blazing through it. They also noted the number of bugs, writing that during our playthrough, we regularly encountered floating scenery, stuck UI elements, teleporting characters, and audio glitches. And it was even worse before the day one patch arrived. I can't wait for a glitch compilation. That's my favorite part of new releases. So they said that the map wasn't quite as big as other open world games, but they were still very impressed with Night City. Video Games Chronicle wrote, it's the density of Night City's buildings and alleyways that's most impressive with apartment blocks, marketplaces, and corporate offices sprawling on top of each other. You can't quite open every door, but at times you'll be convinced you could. That's cool. Makes that's you good. feel like an apartment block. Press start. 
Press, press why did I read start. that? Pre stat Australia. <laughs> Pre stat Australia also said the game was quote riddled with bugs and some frustrating performance woes. Ten out of ten. They yep. said that they had a number of crashes during key story moments that were of course very annoying. They wrote the game also suffers from several visual glitches that range from hilarious to downright unfortunate, from the mid air suspension of discarded weapons to mm -hmm. items exchanging for other items in the middle of cutscenes. Kind of jumped off that one, Brian. I just just went in and out. As we know, the game was delayed repeatedly to fix bugs and polish things, but clearly a lot still made it into the game. But overall, people liked what they saw. VG247's reviewers said they were surprised at how much of a shooter the game was, writing that outside of the crackling chit chat, it's all action all the time. <laughs> Crackling chit chat. I think they're UK based, so they don't speak proper English. Oh. They said that you can choose to be stealthy, but the mechanic can be finicky and it's easier just to barge in with guns a blazing. My oh, kind yeah. of game, baby. Yeah. Hell yeah. And there's the usual array of weapons. You got shotguns, automatic mm. pistols, revolvers, Ooh. sniper rifles, ah, and SMGs, nice. along with bladed and non lethal what? blunt melee ah. weapons. Sounds like my shed. Come and take it. Yeah. yeah. We've actually been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> we've contacted federal authorities. Yeah. You want my non-lethal blunt melee weapons? <laughs> yeah. I'm the guy who brags to you about all the illegal modifications I made. Yeah. Caution, I am bladed and dangerous. <laughs> and of course, speaking of augmentations, there's a lot that you can do to your weapons. In Cyberpunk, VG247 wrote that through expensive augmentations, you can make yourself a weapon able to jump higher or chop people to mince meat with just your bare hands. Oh, so yeah. there's genuinely a huge amount of choice in practically every weapon at your disposal disposal feels well designed in terms of booming sound, futuristic look, and weighted heft. Ooh. Run faster, mince people. Not everybody loved it though. Games Beat's Jeff Grubb was a bit more lukewarm on Cyberpunk, writing that Cyberpunk promised the next generation of choice, simulation, and interactivity. But instead, CD Projekt Red delivered a big budget thrill ride with entertaining quests in a thriving setting. Boo, nobody <laughs> likes that. You know what else is thriving? I don't know, but it's in your pants. Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Blue Chew. This episode of Inside Gaming is brought to you by Blue Chew. Let's talk about something we could all use more of right now, sex. Now, guys, fellas, you can increase your performance, get that extra confidence in bed. Bluechew.com, blue like the color blue. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Blue Chew is made in the USA. It's prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you do not have to go to the doctor or wait in line. It's even cheaper than a pharmacy, and they prepare and ship it right to you in a discreet package. No awkwardness, you don't even have to leave your house. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. You go to bluechew.com, get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code Inside Gaming. You just pay $5 shipping. Again, B L U E Chew.com, promo code Inside Gaming to try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper choice. So please, please, we're begging you. Use our promo code InsideGaming at BlueChew.com. Thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring today's show. So Grub also added, a lot of the game is just there to look good, and that's fine, but it means I don't want to spend a lot of time wandering around the world. If the environment primarily exists to look dope in the background while I'm doing the quests, then I'll probably mostly stick to the main story, see what happens, and then bounce. Dope, dope. Laying on the lingo a little thick there. I Grub guess. man's a cool guy, He's actually. Cool man, <laughs> that's a how do you do fellow kids. He's Meanwhile, you might have noticed that we aren't including reviews from some of the biggest outlets, and that's because there weren't that many. A lot of journalists noted that they just didn't get codes for the game. Forbes writer Dave Tier wrote recently that code distribution seems a little scattered for this game. He added that I have yet to receive a code and I know that a lot of other people are likely in the same boat. The review aggregator site OpenCritic also seemed to confirm that too. They tweeted, we are also seeing very limited Cyberpunk 2077 review copies. We are not publishing a specific embargo time because we cannot get enough publications to verify it because so few have received 
received codes. Yeah. Maybe they were a little concerned about the final state of the game and didn't want to get knocked for all the bugs. Obviously, it's something that they'll fix in the days and weeks ahead, but they were probably a little sensitive about the issues. Bugs aside, the game, it's a, a 91 is still a good, a very, very good review score. Yeah. The game is going to sell no matter what. Bloomberg said that analysts are expecting the game to sell nearly 30 million copies in its first year, which would make it one of the best selling games of all time. Reviews are in. Uh, most of us will be playing it in a few days, no matter what those stuffy critics think. In their ivory towers. I wish I could game in an ivory tower. That would, that would be tight. Be cool. I would have that guy who's got like the weird ridge on his head from yes. the ivory tower and never ending story. He'd be there. Is he cool? Yeah, he's cool. Can he hang? Is he dope? <laughs> Is yeah. he he's dope. Is he dope, dude? He's awesome. Is he fitting with the dope scenery? <laughs> also, <laughs> all of that slang is like 15 to 20 years old. Hey, fellow Gen Xers. Yes, mm -hmm. we're starting to see more copies starting to pop up into the wild. So if they decide to roll Ooh. it back again, <laughs> there, there's a lot of hard copies that they're there's, gonna need to recall. No, there's, there's no going back from no, here. It's, this it's is done. it. We've it's crossed happening. the Rubicon. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's finally happening. Yes, they, they surely, they cannot delay 